Welcome back to another episode of Haas Talks, and you get two for one today. The Barth family is live and in color in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You guys, thanks for uh, for coming down just to see me. I mean, oh, that's the only reason we come here, right? I can't believe there's a race here. Uh, Adam and Courtney Barth <laughs> in studio with us. Uh, guys, let's just break into it real quick. Uh, your parents of uh, two wonderful little girls, and for some odd reason... You guys uh, decided to take on the Soul Cold Brothers. How did that all come about? We Who, needed who's? babysitters. You needed babysitters. We needed babysitters. Is that what it was? <laughs> no. Who, whose idea was it with? I mean, I know you guys had worked with them before between um, shootout stuff and then just in general, right? Like, how did you guys meet the Soul Colds and how did all this come about? So we met them five or six years ago and they were running quarter midgets and we worked for advanced racing and we were building their shocks and... They came in the ARS trailer, and Justice wanted to learn how to build them, the younger one. And so I was like, oh, well, that's cool. No kid's ever done that before. So he got on a pair of gloves, and he got one of his shocks, and he started taking it apart with me and put it back together, and we put it on the dyno. I was like, well, man, not many, like, six-, seven-year-old kids want to know what a shock looks like. They could care less. They're just out running around playing. And then he ran it, and then we grew a relationship after that, and then Colby was there, too, and... The parents are awesome, and we've always wanted to give back and have kids to help and show them what we loved when we were kids and even still to today. And the fact of how dangerous racing can be, and we have our own kids now, you know, when we're not in the car, the chance of us coming home to our kids is a lot higher. Right. You know, there's there's always that of getting hurt. So we saw these boys have this passion, and we wanted to be part of that with them, and it finally worked out. I mean, we've been joking about it for a couple of years with them, and... We finally figured out how to make it all work within like a month or two, and here and then we are. all of a sudden it's like, oh, we're building cars and everything else, yep. and here yep. it is, and now you guys are uh, racing with them quite a bit. Yep. You had to actually go to Colorado to their hometown and, and sign some paperwork and stuff like that. Was that kind of was that was that weird or like a little bit? Justice thought we were purchasing him, yeah. so you know he's like, "You're, <laughs> he you're, you're buying bottom. us? <laughs> you're buying us?" Yeah, yeah, we're like, "No, no, yeah, no, just you know, for the summer, bro. Just yeah, for the just, summer. Yeah. The return yep. policy. Actually, we got him for a year. Yeah, oh, okay. we can return him after shootout, pretty much. Yeah, oh, okay. So, so depending on how much stuff they tear up, and <laughs> if you, as long as you don't let Justice on a four wheeler, you should be all right. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We so heard that story, so we don't allow that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, no allowing that. All right, so let's back up just a little bit. Like, how did each of you get started because you you are both pretty good racers in your right mind. I mean, Courtney, you're a little bit better than Adam. I mean, if we're being honest, right? Like right. Adam, Adam struggles a lot, but he's a, he's kind of a guru whenever it comes to the shocks and the setup and the welding and fabricating. Adam has tested a lot of things, so he really hasn't had a fair advantage at a good season <laughs> ever. Um, but that's how he learns, and that's how he got the cars he has now. I mean, him and Rusty have put together some bad cars. Like they look good they run good stuff doesn't break uh, i don't know it's just knock on wood it's been great whether we've whether the results have showed it or not it's been amazing and shootout was the first time out with the car that adam built with rusty and the first time out rusty comes in he's like yeah he's shaking his head and you know when he comes in off the track and he's shaking his head you know you're good like yeah. you're good to go well, for the rest of the yeah. day rusty's comfortable and all that and then we built more and it was just like wow the first night out with the boys like we were not expecting them to do as well as they did i mean we thought they'd do well but <laughs> right they were like on it and we were like holy cow man this is gonna be a fun summer i was like we might need to like crank it down a little bit yeah you know but yeah i mean it's you know we built that car originally me and rusty have talked about this for a couple of years now we were going to build some then we didn't and i built one new one and you know he went and ran his d1s and he had a bunch of success with those you know and it just got to the point where his business is growing i wanted to try this you know we wanted to build new cars and it was like all right let's try to build what we want let's take everything that we feel is in our minds you know what we like what works best what's you know those things that don't fit together quite right and just tried to build in our minds what was our perfect car you know so we built one and we went to shoot out and we've kind of had this in our head that like it would be cool to do, you know, a driver development deal and get back. And obviously the so cool kids are, they just, they work hard, you know. They're all in when it comes right. to it. And, you know, we went to shoot out and we started talking and, like, they kind of laughed about it. And you were like, no, we're serious, you know. Let's let's try to really make this put work. Down, yeah, put you know. And so we came home from shoot out and I think within a week we had it all yep. done up. And we were building, went it from building one quick. more car <laughs> to, you know, three more cars and, 
we've got four of them now, and we got to build some more, I guess, for shootouts so we can have more cars, right? Man, this is just wild to me. Now, have you guys always – you guys prefer non-winged over winged, right? Yeah, uh, I, I mean, do. we're in Indiana, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she used I've to want to run wing until she ran it. <laughs> yeah. So it's – yeah, I mean, non-wings are our thing, you know. The wing – the Rusty's always been a wing racer. He always complained when we go non-wing racing, and then he would outrun us. And I'm like, yeah, you know, he's like, I just don't care. So I go run non-wing, and you know, and I think he put a lot of pressure on himself when it came to the wing because that's his focus. And now he's just, you know, he's he likes he's good to be the now. veteran now, you know. Yeah, yeah, and he's and so and we only get to run. Indiana doesn't have non-wing racing, right? We right. got a class wing. wing, but yeah, we or, yeah, we yeah, don't we have don't wing, have wing racing. Outlaw sorry. Stuff. You know, you got to go to Illinois to run or something like that. But it's just so we basically have ran twice this year. You know, we went to the hustle. Russ locked in. Yeah. He was running really well, third, fourth, yeah, somewhere right in there. And yeah, the DB did a left rear tire. You know, just one of those caught a rut wrong, and then other night here he sealed a tire over running second. You know, and it's just little little, little things. things. We'll catch some luck, and it'll all work out. But for the overall product of seeing russ come here so many times and then to see him come in here with this new car and he's on the pole with that eight car 81 car yeah, whoever that, that dude is yeah. um gosh what is his name francis what frank uh, anyway we'll we'll google that later um but to have the success that you did that night i mean it has to be pretty good now abm chassis is this something that is going to be is it going to be a hot ticket on the market or are you limiting yourself <laughs> just to doing your cars and cars for russ yeah i mean right now that's it's it's our cars and russ's car it's you know i work 45 50 hours a week on top of doing all this and go home and build it in this little garage out of my dad's and it just there's not enough time to do it you know right. and and put a full effort into doing it and it's uh it's not to run any try to take over anything or do right. that we just we wanted a piece that was what we wanted and yeah. That's what we set out to do. You know, maybe someday that things will align and we can start building them. But right now, that's not the goal. Right now, it's just to so make what we want. So you both have full-time jobs. What is the full-time job? Um, I may manage the wood shop at a – it's called Creative Works. So we build, like, laser tag arenas and escape rooms and mini golf courses and all that. And it just – it's a total 180 from what I was doing before, you know, working at Advanced and – being in racing seven days a week, coming home with your hobby, you just yeah, you get burnt out on it. You know, it's it's. It was always something you couldn't yeah. escape it. Yeah, your your phone's on all weekend. You know, people are calling you, needing this, needing that, and it's, you know, I we built a lot of great relationships and wouldn't be where we are without it and that. And Corey, you know, he's the one that got us interested in micros. I was racing full wheelers before this, and he's like, hey, man, you need to get a roll cage over your head, you know? Yeah. So and, uh, you know, we turned out we go down this and 10 years later here we are and we're building cars and got justice and colby and russ and just kind of took a different career path and it's been really good it's been a fun year so what what's what's an average daylight for courtney <laughs> when in the summer or during school i work at school so i work with special needs students so i have off all summer and anytime school is out i have off so it's great with our kids and then it's great for race season because right. i don't have to worry about anything and um I don't know. An average day with the Sokol boys there <laughs> and our two What's, girls. Was was that a big adjustment for the girls, having having two big brothers come in? Or was it something that was just like, the, it just all the pieces fit perfect, right? It does. I mean, they don't complain. They, they're they sharing a bedroom. Uh, we have, you make <laughs> them clean, they complain. We make them clean a little bit, but um, they're sharing a bedroom. So our girls have a bunk bed in their bedroom, which they have before the boys even came. So the boys took over the other bedroom, and they have a bunk bed and they share a room but the girls have loved it like it hasn't affected them in a bad way at all like if anything it's been better for them they have two kids that they can look around because we don't have family around us there's no other cousins or they're all a couple hours away or my family's all in a different state mm -hmm. so it kind of gave them like a friend and when we're not racing we like to go fishing and the boys will just take them down to the river and take them fishing and I can do what I need to get done and you know they're out working on the race cars and the girls go out and help on stuff or sit in the car while they're working on it or yeah. ride their bikes outside I mean it's it's been really good for us and I think good for the boys too to have that like they're a big sibling you know Colby's the older one so he's been a big sibling but right. they both do and if we have to run up to Rusty's and get wings or parts or whatever we need that's two hours up and two hours back so the boys will stay in watch the girls and yeah. I'll go run and do all that and come back and it just all works out good and 
everywhere that we have to get bolts or parts, they're all within 30 minutes or an hour, and the boys will just watch the girls, and I'll go run and get what we need, and then they'll stay back and maintenance and wash and get everything ready, clean the trailer. I mean, they'll do whatever whatever yeah. we ask them yeah. to do. They're good. It's kind of gave the girls somebody to look up to. You know, they see kids that they're not they're not their mom and dad. They're younger. You know, they still recognize them as kids and they respect the boys yeah they do you know and then they see them work on stuff and it kind of gives them some drive to like now they're becoming more interested and in wanting to do something yeah. you know it's not just dad doing it or mom doing it it's here's another kid out here trying to do the same stuff we're doing and it's drawn a lot of interest to that have either of you guys like missed being in the car and in racing like Oh is, yeah. Is there is yeah. there a drive Not to like like when it's this hot? I'm like, nah, nah. <laughs> nah. I'm done. Yeah, you I know. like the heat. <laughs> that doesn't bother me, but it's wings, so I'm like, eh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, like the Sprague, that's going to be a hard one to watch. Right. You know, I I love going there and watching the boys rip around there and Rusty rip around Logan Sport. It was, it's times it's hard to watch, but it's rewarding seeing them run well. You know, watching Justice do what he did last night was was pretty awesome. You know, he's first year in Outlaw and he's up there ripping the top and. Mm -hmm. You know, racing with Jake Nell and guys like that that's been got a lot of laps around here, you know. A lot and of laps. More than how old they are. You right, know, those yeah. Boys, they've been racing longer than those boys have been yeah. alive. So it's like we got to remind them, like, you're doing good. Like, keep it up. Like, have right. that confidence. Let's and that's been that's been a big change for them. You know, they did the now 600 deal, which is an awesome thing. You know, they've gotten a lot of experience on these different mm -hmm. tracks and different divisions and all this, you know, and they got to race every week and they kind of developed their skills. But now they're coming back to these – purpose-built bull rings right. you know and there's you know we got what how many cars we got here this weekend like 40 something 50 almost you know you know 50 cars that's been the you know 50 to what we had 95 90, you know yeah. so yeah. this year so they've had these huge car counts where and everybody's on their game you know right. there's there's a lot of guys that can go out there and run well and it's been you gotta think fast on the bull rings too yeah. that's different yeah. you know they've ran on a lot of bigger tracks where it's kind of slower reacting and these have been like you got to be on it, and start of the heat race, you got to go. You right. Know? So it's been a, a little different, but yeah, I mean, it's it they've they've adjusted well. You know, the improvement we see over the weekends, and it's been uh, it's been really cool to see them. You know, I know they get down on themselves because I know they have the speed and all that to do it, and it's like, guys, look at where you are. You know, look at how long some of these guys have been running to get to where they are. You know, and you'll be there. It's just they they keep digging and they're learning every week, and that's all we can really ask out of them. So you you see a lot more now in micro racing is the driver development stuff coming into play. I mean, you got Frank Flood doing a driver development. You got Frank Galusha, Joe B. Miller, Keith Coons is coming to the micro game and everything else. It's all about driver development and putting butts in seats, right? Mm -hmm. um, do you guys feel like you are a driver development, or do you feel like you're more than that? Like you are I, – I mean, me, my personal opinion on it, I feel like you guys are life development, right? You're teaching these kids – like hardcore life lessons like yeah. it's not just about the racing because you guys want to give back it's not just about you know am i going to be able to pay bills or whatever you're actually putting a lot of your own money into what you're doing with these two boys yeah, yeah so. i mean it's it's been that's kind of what it was to us is we wanted you know a big reason we did it with the Soko boys is because they're they're all in this you know it's just they live it, breathe it, and it's been a good example. You know, they're seeing what it takes to go work. Like every night, them boys run three to four miles, and they've been getting more. You know, putting, getting physically in shape, getting mentally in shape. You know, they're they're learning what stuff costs. They're learning how much work goes into building stuff. We've had them out building Nerf bars and panels, and they tear up stuff. They got to come help fix it. You know, it's and just everyday life stuff. You know, it's been uh, yeah, it's more than just making a living off of it and doing something like that. It's it's uh like it truly is just to give back and you know like you said a life development I feel like yeah I think we're at a position where we can pay our bills like we don't have a lot of extra money but we're comfortable where we're at so as long as they came in and helped out with the expenses and having the boys there and we were able to do it it's like we kind of just took over their mom and dad role for <laughs> while they're there so we're we try to be realistic with them and we're very honest with them like we don't sugarcoat anything and we tried telling them, like, we are here to make you better. So we are going to tell you your flaws and what you're doing wrong and try and make that. But we try to say it in a way that's not like you suck. Yeah. You know, <laughs> like, hey, I think you can be better here or maybe try this next time. So it's not coming out of, like, their mom or dad's mouth where everybody is different with right. their parents than they are with other people. And just the fact of just other things, like, at home and when we go places, just how to 
respond to certain situations and things we've thought or learned when we were little and yeah, just try to how to be a good person on top of being a good race car driver, you know, like that stuff will take you far in your career. And, you know, it's hard to go anywhere as just being a driver. So we wanted to show them all these other skills that they could do. And around Indy, like how many places there are to work and things to learn. And, you know, one of them likes the motors and one of them likes the tires, like they're very opposite. So we try to introduce them to people around Indy that can go with their interests. And then if someday racing and driving doesn't, they could still be a part of the sport in a different way. And that's been a lot of fun is showing them all the different things that you can do besides driving. So we got to chatting a little bit the other night about that, about some of the connections that you guys have through your years at advanced racing and just in racing in general, that they're actually going to get the opportunity to go be a part of some pretty big races and some pretty notable teams. Um, kind of talk about like how you got that all set up. Is that something that you thought of throughout the whole process of, hey, we can bring these boys here and we can race, but we can also introduce them to other people and, yeah. you know, let let their personality shine a little bit, right? I think that was a big part of the start. Like when I, when Adam and I talked, we didn't want this just to be you come and drive. Like we did not want that at all. We wanted to do everything. Um, and they had the attitude to be open to do all of that. So why not push them to do that? And like they went and helped Keith Coons and Jay Drake and that team for midget week for a couple nights that we weren't racing. And they just scraped mud and pushed the cars with a four wheeler and just little stuff, but they met people and they got in and we'd walk away or we had a friend take them to one because we had a wedding and let them build that relationship. We introduce, but then they have to build that relationship Mm -hmm. themselves. They have to ask questions, you know, and sometimes you don't get to, really talk you just got to sit and listen and they did they would come home and they had so much to say and it was so good for them and it was eye-opening for them too you know i mean they're like just a realization more of what you see on twitter and tv you know they got to see the real happenings and you know the the goods and the bads of racing right you know not everything's as great as it looks from the outside and some things are you know really awesome that you don't realize are there so they you know they got to meet Trent with um, with the Speedway Motors and TRD and, you know, introduced to them and KKM and, um, and Jake Swanson. Yep, you know, week. they've got to spend some time and meet him a couple times. And they've been a couple different businesses and shops around Indy. So they're gaining, gaining some knowledge, you know. I said, just, you know, get to introduce yourself to people. make Meet people, you know, and yeah. just be yourselves. You, they're good kids. So, you know, something... It'll lead to nothing, or you might turn out something great. You know, either way, you're going to make relationships. Yeah, right. That's our thing. You can learn from everything, whether it's good, bad. You know, it doesn't go your way. You are always learning. You're constantly learning, and I think they're they're getting that. And like Jake with the shocks, he's been helping us with our shocks, and the boys go over there, and Justice likes shocks. You know, yeah. So he's like, well, I could use some help, and we're like, well, if we figure out a day during the week, like they can come over and help, do whatever you need, and you know, he helps them out with that, and. Um, he has some openings for them to help maybe during sprint week. And, you know, even if it's scraping mud, man, you're yeah. meeting people, you're seeing everything. You're, you can watch the race and learn. I mean, someday hopefully they'll be in a midget and sprint car, yeah. however far they want to go. So then they have more knowledge just by being around it. So hopefully we've got good people like that around us that are willing to take them on. Like there's been nothing but good things said and done. So we're excited for them. And then we – might get an off night here or there to right. go do something together. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there we you never go. have date night. Yeah, never have date night. <laughs> Race cars date night. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, just didn't even get to hang around Rusty all the time. You know, they've learned a ton from him and learned about the machining and yep. all the stuff he's done. It's, it's like you said, it's learning a lot more than just driving a race car. So, so uh, going into to racing and things now with um, just the way everything is, the economy and everything else, um, the way the world is now, it's a lot different from whenever you guys started racing, right? So it's a big change. Um, what would be like a key piece of advice that you may give to like a parent or a young racer like Colby and Justice that are out there, you know, mom and dad are doing everything they can. They're all putting in, in 110%, but they're just hitting dead ends. They're not finding the right people. They're not finding the bars of the world that, you know, would, would open up arms and open up notebooks and, and share information um, what would you say to somebody that may be hitting that, that roadblock or plateau of, you know? I think one of the hardest things or the thing we say the most is we catch people listening to 10 different people on what to do with their racing, what to do with their child, what to do with their car. And it's like you, 
you listen to too many people and then you get frustrated or it's bad advice. Yeah. And it's like you got to pick one or watch a crew, watch a team that you see doing well and watch them when they come in the pits. Like, how are they responding? Is stuff getting thrown everywhere? Are they cussing? Are they mad the whole time? Like, we don't want to ever operate that way. Like, whether we're terrible or not, like, we want to come in, no crying, talk about it, learn from it, move on. But we have met a lot of people that have had bad advice from too many people. You know, it's like they listen to too many or they go to set up their car and they're listening to this person, that person, and that person. Well, that's not the whole setup for one car, you right. know. You're doing something from everybody, and that's really hard to keep track of, let alone try and have a kid drive that, yeah. you know. So I think that would be my thing is to find one person and roll with it and but really watch their body language. Watch how they are around other people and how people respond to them, you know. Well, I, I I agree with that as well, but, like, a big thing for me, like I've always told Kevin and them, is, like, enjoy where you're at, right? That may be as far as you ever go. Like, right. have fun with it, enjoy it, you know, and, and work towards those opportunities, but enjoy it. So many people come into this that they are in a hurry to get to midgets. They're in a hurry to get to sprint cars, and that's all they focus on. You know, enjoy your th- enjoy yourselves. Make make the best of this, you know, right. spend time with your family, you know, and that's and that's a big part of it, you know. Is just, I feel like if you don't enjoy it, if you're always focused on the next step, you're never going to get better where you're at because you're right, always focused on right, right. where you got to get. You know, if you focus on being the best you can be where you're at, you know, I mean, not you can make a g- good career in micros. You look at guys like Sawyer and Dicely and Frank. You know, I mean, they've made they've made livings off of this. So it's just you know enjoy where you're at. You know, don't find one person, listen to them, and just I think be yourself. You know, be a good person and. Try not to get burned out. Yeah, don't get burned out. We see out that when they move up too fast. People get burned out, and then they don't come back. You yeah. know, they're out of the sport, and it's like, take your time. You know, learn. Like, Enjoy the ride. Yeah. There you go. That is, we're going to end it right there because that's <laughs> perfect. Listen to one person, enjoy the ride, enjoy your time in the moment that you're living in. This has been another episode of Haas Talks.